Okay, so we will now discuss the Fourier transform. We will first dis discuss this for L1 functions on Rn and then see how we can extend this to certain class of distributions. You can't do it for all distributions, but there's a certain class where you can do it. Okay, so henceforth, uh, we assume all functions to be complex value. Up to now, it didn't matter. But now the Fourier transform is particularly adapted for, uh, I mean, meant for complex valued functions. So, so definition, let f belong to L1 of Rn. The Fourier transform of f of f denoted f hat is defined by f hat of xi equals integral over rn e power minus 2 pi i x dot xi f of x dx for all xi in Rn. So, what is x dot xi? So, x dot xi in terms of its components is sigma i equals 1 to n xi, uh, let us say xj j equals 1 to 1, xj xi j. I am using j because i is a square root, fixed square root of minus 1. So, we, this is the complex i and therefore, I do not want to use it for an index as well. Okay, so this is the definition of the Fourier transform. So to start with, you have to check if it's well defined. So if I take mod of f hat xi, this is less than or equal to integral over R n. Modulus of exponential i something is one, and therefore you have just mod f x dx, and that is finite. Okay, so you have that. Uh, the Fourier transform is well defined and in fact f hat belongs to L infinity of Rn and from this you get that norm f hat in L infinity is less than or equal to norm f in L1 of Rn. Okay. So, by a simple application, simple application of the dominated convergence theorem implies f hat is in fact continuous. I will leave you to verify the details. So, you take xi n converging to xi, then you show that f hat xi n, that is so, so xi n converges to xi, then you show that f hat xi n converges to f hat of xi. So, this is just direct and simple application of, a, of the dominated convergence theorem and you can uh, do it as a very simple exercise. In fact, we have something much more which we will now prove. So, theorem f in L1 of Rn, then f hat is uniformly continuous. Okay, so proof. So, let epsilon be greater than 0, arbitrary small positive quantity and then f is in Rn, f is in L1 of Rn implies there exists an R positive such that integral of Rn minus the ball center origin and radius R mod fx dx is less than say epsilon by 4 because integral mod f is a convergent integral therefore this is the tail of a convergent integral you are taking away a ball of radius r so as r goes becomes bigger and bigger the what is remaining outside the ball the integral will be smaller and smaller this is just the the fact that f is in l1 okay so given 
eta positive choose uh, or, uh, sorry 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 choose eta positive such that you have 4 pi r eta integral over b0 r of mod fx dx is less than epsilon because this is now a finite quantity once r is fixed this is a fixed constant so i can choose eta small enough such that you can bring it less so now let mod h be less than del eta <coughs> and h in rn let y in nil if y belongs to rn what do you have mod of f hat y plus h minus f hat y this is equal to integral of rn <coughs> fx e power minus 2 pi i x dot y times e power minus 2 pi i x dot h minus 1 dx modulus of this because this is e power i x dot y plus h which I split into two parts minus e power i x dot y dx. Okay, so this is equal to that is less than or equal to integral over rn mod fx. This one is of integral 1, so I do not have to worry about. So, e power minus 2 pi i x dot h minus 1 dx, which is equal to. So, what is modulus e power 2 pi i x dot e power i theta is cos theta plus i sin theta minus 1. So, you then if you simplify that expression, you will get that that is equal to mod f x into mod of sin x dot h pi, pi times x dot h dx. Okay. So, now that is less than or equal to I am going to split the integral into two parts. So, that is integral over rn mod, uh, minus b0 r mod fx. Now, sin pi hx is I am going to okay that oh I forgot this should be a 2 here okay. So, twice this okay that will be the uh, uh, if you write e power i theta minus 1 take the modulus you get 2 mod sin theta ok. So, you, you have 2 times that. So, mod f x 2 times mod f x and for sin pi x I am simply using here that the fact that it is less than or equal to 1 plus integral r of over b 0 r again I have mod f x ok and now I am going to uh, write this as less than or equal to sin mod sin theta is less than or equal to mod theta. So, that will be 2 pi. So, the pi comes from mod x dot h dx which is less than. So, the first integral we already know is less than epsilon by 4 plus 2 pi times mod x is less than r mod h is less than eta. So, this is the Cauchy Schwartz inequality which I am going to write 2 pi mod r eta integral b 0 r of mod f x dx, but we chose 4 pi r eta of this integral less than epsilon. So, that is less. So, that is ok here this is 2. So, this became epsilon by 2 sorry for that and so this becomes the so this is less than epsilon by 2 plus epsilon by 2 which is equal to epsilon ok. So, this proves the uniform continuity of the Fourier transform ok. So, the following proposition is very theorem is very useful in all calculations involving the Fourier transform. So, let f belong to L1 of Rn 
and y in R n. Then for every xi in R n we have 1 tau y of f. So if you translate f by y and then take hat evaluate it at xi this is e power minus 2 pi i y dot xi f hat z. So if you translate the function and then take the Fourier transform you just have to multiply it by a certain exponential to the dual property. So tau y of f hat xi is capital F hat xi where capital Fx equal to e power 2 pi i x dot y f of x. So here they are dual to each other. If you take the translation and then take the Fourier transform, then you get multiply it by an exponential. If you want to translate the Fourier transform, then you have to first multiply the function with an exponential and then take the Fourier transform. Then 3 lambda be greater than 0 and g of x equals f of x by lambda. Then g hat xi equals lambda power n f hat lambda xi. 4 f g in L1 of Rn, then F star G, the convolution of L1 to L1 functions is well defined. So it's again a L1 function. I can take the Fourier transform. This is a beautiful property. This is just F hat psi G hat psi. So the convolution product on taking the Fourier transform becomes the algebraic product. Okay. So this convolution together with Fourier transform becomes a very powerful tool in the study of partial differential equations essentially because of this property. So proof. So 1 to 3 direct consequence of definition. So it is left to you as an exercise to familiarize yourself with the formula and all the. So we will just prove 4. So let us take h equals f star g. This also belongs to L1 of R. So h hat of xi equals integral over Rn e power minus 2 pi i x dot xi into the convolution f star g at x. Okay, so you have to take integral over Rn f of x minus y gy dy and then you have a dx and then of course we can we are we all everything is l1 and exponential as modulus 1 so modulus will be all be a integrable function and therefore you can interchange the order of the integration by Fubini's theorem so this is the integral over rn gy okay and then integral over rn e power minus 2 pi i x dot xi f of x minus y dx and then a dy. This I am going to write as integral over rn e power minus 2 pi i y dot xi integral rn e power minus 2 pi i x minus y dot xi f of x minus y dx dy. So e power here I put a e power 2 pi i y dot xi extra and then I have cancelled it here. So this is fine. Now for every y fixed x minus y this is just a translation of x. So Lebesgue measure is translation invariant. So this integral 
is just f hat psi. So this is f hat psi times eta minus 2 pi i y dot z dy uh, into g y sorry I forgot the g y. So that is nothing but g hat z. So you just get the thing in ok. So this is a very useful property. So now let us conclude this section with an example. So example. So let us take f of x equals e power minus mod x square x in r n and we want to compute this Fourier transform. So this f belongs to in fact to all LP spaces in particular in L1 of r n. Okay. So, so let us take first of all that n equals 1. So f x equals e power minus x square. Okay. So then what is f hat z equals integral minus infinity to infinity e power minus 2 pi i x i times e power minus x square dx. Okay. So now I am going to complete the squares and therefore this is equal to integral minus infinity to infinity e power minus pi square z square into e power minus x plus i pi z whole square dx. So now we have to evaluate this integral. So we will use Cauchy's theorem for contour integral. So this is some minus r, this is plus r and then this is the line i pi xi okay and then you have this is the origin so you have the take this contour and you integrate e so this is gamma so gamma 1 gamma 2 gamma 3 and gamma 4 so gamma is equal to the union of gamma i equals 1 to 4 gamma i and then you look at 0 equals integral over gamma e power minus z square d z. Okay. And then uh, you evaluate it around this contour let r tend to infinity and so on and then you will get uh, finally so I will leave the contour integration because anyway I will do find the Fourier transform by another method which is more elegant uh, later on. So this contour integral like uh, you can do it as an exercise for yourself. So you will get, so this will imply that f hat psi equals root pi times e power minus pi square psi square. Okay, check. Okay. So if n is bigger than 1, so then you have f hat xi equals integral over rn e power minus 2 pi i x dot xi e power minus mod x square and that is equal to integral over rn e power minus sigma j equals 1 to n. xj square plus 2 pi i xj zij dx and that is equal to pi the product j equals 1 to n. So I am going to split the since so that will give you again if you complete the squares minus pi square zij square into integral minus infinity to infinity e power minus xj plus i pi zij square dxj. So you see it is the same as this integral and therefore we can simply write this is nothing but root pi to the n 
e power minus sigma j equals 1 to n pi square xi j square. Consequently, you have that. So, therefore, f hat psi equals pi to the power of n over 2 e power minus pi square mod xi square. So you see for e power minus mod x square the Fourier transform looks very much the same it it's almost the same up to some scaling factors and this is uh, some kind of eigenfunction for this operator but anyway that's uh, I'm just that's just a passing remark so you don't have to take it too seriously so we will see this but we will derive this uh, in a completely different way using the properties so our next prop thing is to so, L1 is taken to L infinity by the Fourier transform. We are, uh, we want to look at some space which is stable under the Fourier transform so that we can use it to define uh, some function space which is stable under the Fourier transform. That means, if the function belongs to the space, the Fourier transform also belongs to the space. And uh, once we identify that space, then we will see that we can uh, extend the definition of the Fourier transform to certain classes of distributions. Mm -hmm.